I still stand by the statement. I want to see what the hell that game looks like right now on a base Xbox One. <laughs> I would pay money to get that footage and see what the hell that game looks like on an Xbox One, man. How do you think, how long do you think they're gonna support the Xbox One with like a 10 year plan with Infinite? There's no way they'd support the Xbox One for 10 years. No, eventually they'll have to. I mean, according to Microsoft, they, they want to support, it's all one ecosystem going forward. Yeah. But eventually you gotta make that decision where you're just like, um, <laughs> all right, well, this feature's not coming to you guys, I'm sorry. Like you can play the game, but uh, maybe this DLC or it's just too expansive or, you know, the, these features, they're just they're just not possible in that hardware without really um, limiting the design influence from 343, like really limiting what they can pull off. So um, I, I there it's a fine line. A lot of people are arguing like, dude, cancel the Xbox one version. It, you know, make it Series X only. I don't agree with that because I yeah. still think um there's plenty of you have more player base obviously on xbox one right now than you'll have on your series x so that would be huge to the uh huge detriment to the sales of the game but at the same time and player base but at the same time um you know like it, it, it's a lot easier think of a pc i don't get why people are get like don't get this think of a pc where lower end pcs still run games that we play you just gotta fine tune graphics settings it's gonna be up to developers to do that but like i said at the same time it's a fine line you know, eventually you're you're basically, you know, restricting 343 from doing what they possibly could do with the game because you have to make it for older hardware too. Like that Destiny 1 had that problem. Vault Space being a, a prime example and, and who knows what else they had to do to, yeah, to really I don't, tune think they ever, I don't think they ever really came straight forward in what the, no, the, nah. the 360 and the PS4 were holding it back or PS3 at the time, right? We're holding right. back. But I mean, yeah, they just straight up like had to stop supporting those consoles like I think they, I don't think they, I think they got, did they get Rise of Iron DLC? And then they got the Taken King. Um, and then. I think so. I don't, I don't remember. I, th hearing I don't think that. they got, I don't even think they got the Rise of Iron content. They got the update to the game, but they didn't get the content of Rise the of Iron. DLC itself? Yeah. That's crazy. Cause like, they were like, yeah, this, it, plus like the load times on the 360 and PS3 were just like God. absurd, yeah. apparently. I never played it on those consoles, but apparently it was just like, awful load times which you know totally understandable trying to support right. those consoles i mean i could definitely see the xbox one affecting like play space size potentially because you definitely don't want to have people playing on those xbox ones to feel like they're playing a massively inferior product you know right uh, the only time i ever really saw that happen was with battlefield 3 Playing that Battlefield 3 on the 360 compared to what it was, what was on PC, it's not even close to even being like the same game. Like right. the PC version is just so much better with like higher player counts, way better graphics, uh, way better handling. It's like it, it was almost dumb to play it on the 360 after playing it on PC. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering like if like the play space sizes, so they like tailored the map for draw distance so then it wouldn't look obviously terrible on the xbox right. ones where like on the xbox series x and s by the way um we yeah. uh you might have much more wider open areas potentially it did right. seem like even like we are going up that elevator right it did seem like the the horizon like where like that palace of pain like building is in the background mm -hmm. even though yeah it was far away but it wasn't like super far away it still felt kind of close like and like i could probably run there in like i don't know 10 minutes you know right you know something like that and uh even with all the obstacles in the way and stuff <laughs> um so i i couldn't imagine supporting the xbox one beyond like two years after release of halo infinite right i think after that it's kind of like all right guys it's time it's time to get real here you're playing on a console by that point is 10 years old <laughs> right either upgrade or get to go to pc or i don't know what you guys are gonna do maybe just keep playing the campaign over you know You're right i'm not quite sure i'm not sure exactly how long destiny supported the uh the 360 and ps3 i think it was if it was rise of iron it would have been two years then yeah 
So I think that's about right. You gotta give people uh, some, you know, time to kind of ramp up. I mean, because like, or or even just multiplayer. I mean, multiplayer is not nearly as demanding as what the campaign will be. True. Yeah. Uh, unless unless there's certain modes like you know Warzone, uh, whatever Warzone 2.0 is, or if we do get a battle royale, you know, that could be more demanding. But your base multiplayer suite of arena um, should be, you know, and that's gonna be free to play, so a standalone thing. So hey, if you gotta leave them back behind in the dust and campaign upgrades only come to series x and you know you could still play multiplayer and that still keeps your player base alive for the game you know that's a win-win you know that's always an option too especially with it like i said being a free-to-play so you're not really saying like oh screw you you paid money for the game but guess what we ain't supporting it no more so bye bye sorry thanks for the money you know that that's always an option too so that i never even thought about that until now that that could be uh well, there's also you know, that factor. free upgrade path as well. Right. You get on yep. on the Xbox One, you can get to on the Series X for free, yep. which yep. is really nice. Yep. Like probably yeah, could be one why one. like they probably saw some delays happening with some of the other games they wanted to be on launch title. Like, well, we can't make them pay for the same game six months later. <laughs> That'd right. just be awful. So EA yeah. would be like, make them pay for six months later. <laughs> yeah. uh, what uh, Control is doing that? Control, you. Uh... You could, if you have to buy the deluxe edition to get the upgrade for the oh, series yeah, X, I heard that. PS5, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the base game, nope, sorry, uh, you're you're uh, SOL. <laughs> yeah, but you know, <laughs> yeah, people are gonna do what they do. I even know about the game, so it's whatever. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm, I'm a, just so uh, focused on the Halo. So, so this was a clip from our most recent episode of the Halo Outreach Podcast, a podcast that Patman Gaming and I host together to give you the weekly news updates of everything going on with Halo. So if you want to stay up to date with all the news, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitch where we live stream the podcast as well. Hope to get to see you all there. So we, one thing we really want to touch on with this specific video is talking about the Xbox One impact when it comes to halo infinite and uh, we also brought up the fact of how uh, how long is xbox one going to be supported as we do know halo infinite has a 10-year plan though i wouldn't expect the xbox one to be part of that plan for the entirety of 10 years just two years after the release of halo infinite it's going to be 10 years for the xbox one so it's gonna be pretty tough to bring your high quality content over while also being supportive to a older generation game uh games like uh destiny like we mentioned earlier they stopped supporting new content for the 360 and ps3 back for the rise of iron dlc they still got the update to the game but they just didn't get the dlc as they didn't want to have to cut content that people paid for kind of like what they're doing now with destiny 2 and bungie did cite that 90 percent of their player base is on the newer generation at that time and so it makes sense to be okay to kind of cut those players out for the new content uh, another thing was also that i checked on the call of duty series in the last supported 360 and ps3 version of call of duty was black ops 3 in 2015 so right around that two-year cutoff we saw that happen again so i would see something rather similar for the halo infinite support on the xbox one but let me know in the comment section down below guys do you think the xbox one is holding back halo infinite i can see your opinions as i do read most of the comments and try to reply to most of them as well so thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it. check out the videos on the screen right now if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so and thank you so much for watching i'll catch you on the next video peace out